Today, I'm going to show you how to serve static content such as HTML pages or images to your users faster. And in order to do that, we will learn a little bit about the service called CloudFront. I'm gonna try to not bog you down with a lot of technical terms, but let's briefly look at AWS documentation and see how CloudFront actually works. And then in the second part of this video, I will show you how to set it up working with NS3 bucket. Here I am on the AWS documentation page on how CloudFront delivers content to your users. Once everything is configured, here's how it's gonna work. Basically a user goes to a URL, for example, www.yourwebsite.com. Once that happens, then your website is supposed to respond to the user with something. Maybe it's the HTML page, maybe it's an image file, maybe it's something else. What happens first is that the DNS, and I know I promise to not bog it down with technical terms, but DNS is the service that converts your website domain name, such as yourwebsite.com, into something computers can understand, which is an IP address, which is basically an address for another computer. So the DNS service, it routes your request to CloudFront, what's called edge location. And edge location is just a fancy term to say a data center. It's a data center somewhere around the world that can best serve the request. And typically it's the nearest one in terms of latency to your users. Typically it means that it is the closest data center to where the request came from. And then CloudFront checks if there is a cache for the requested object, which means has anybody asked for this before? And if not, it's gonna go and go to the original data center where your files are stored. Then it's gonna start responding to the user as soon as it retrieves the first byte of the content. And at the same time, it's also going to cache it in that data center near the user so it could deliver it faster the next time. What I'm going to show you is how to serve a simple image from an S3 bucket via CloudFront. So we're going to go first and create an S3 bucket and we will just go to S3 in AWS console and then click create bucket and we can just leave general purpose in here and then we'll just say CloudFront demo code yeah. and then we can actually enable the ACL and then we will just say that whoever's the object writer is gonna remain the object owner just don't worry about this part for now and then we're actually going to unblock this all public access because we want to be able to serve our files from this three bucket to the users, well, to anybody in the world, really. Of course, if you are trying to serve something that not everybody should have access to, then you would go about it in a different way. But today, anybody who goes to the website, whenever the website loads, everybody sees those images. So that's the type of bucket we're creating where we could store those images. Now we're going to acknowledge that it will result in the object becoming public. If you choose to enable bucket versioning, that means you will be able to go back to the previous version of your image or of your file if you accidentally overrode it. And that's all we need here. So we will just click create bucket and hopefully there is no bucket with the same name already. And once the bucket is created, we can upload something to it. Go to unsplash.com and look for something free. Let's just upload this Flamingo. It says download free. We can download what's a medium. Okay, now it's in our downloads folder. Go back to our bucket and just put it in here. And then we will click upload. Okay, once the file is uploaded, you can go back to the objects, click on this file and Actually, you're already able to access it via the internet. You could send this link that says object URL to anybody. And what they can do is go here and it says access denied. So that means we missed configuring some setting that lets us access it publicly. If we go back to, to our bucket, let's go back and delete this object. I can just say permanent delete and confirm. And then let's try to re-upload it. And here, actually, in the permissions tab, as you can see, we only allow the object owner to have the read and write access. What we want is to grant public read access. And then we obviously need to understand the risks and click upload. So now, if we go back to our object and copy the object URL, voila, we actually see this image. Now, 
obviously we don't want to just put a bunch of these S3 links to our website. First of all, it's not very smart because people would know our bucket name and may try to hack it or whatever. But secondly, as we discussed earlier, it is not the most efficient way to serve traffic to users because it may be slow to them. For example, I am in Las Vegas and if somebody from Hong Kong is going to try to access my website or my image, it's going to take them a lot longer just to go to this URL directly. So let's go and set up what's called a cloud from distribution. So note the bucket name that you've made. You can just duplicate this tab and go to CloudFront. And here we can just follow the instructions, click create distribution, choose our bucket name, which is right here. And then we can leave pretty much everything on default here. We can just let CloudFront optimize things correctly for us. If we were building a production website that we cared about, we would probably look into the web application firewall to make sure we're protected from different threats and vulnerabilities. But for now, just to get things started, we will just say not enable it. And then you basically scroll all the way down and click create distribution. And it is going to take a few minutes probably. So if you refresh, it still says deploying in the last modified field. Once it gives you the date of when it was last modified, that means it has successfully created the distribution. But now let me show you how we are going to construct our URLs moving forward. For example, if you wanted to put the image on the website. So here we are going to copy this distribution domain name and put it in here. Then we're going to put the slash and then we're going to go back to our bucket and copy the key, which will most likely be the name of your image. So we copy this and we append it to the end. And that's how your URL is going to look like. So your cloud from distribution domain name and then the image key from your S3 bucket. And while we are waiting for it to finish deploying, it may also be worth talking about pricing. We go back to our original page and then go back to what is, go to pricing, and then we go to CloudFront pricing. Oh, we could have just Googled it. We can see that in the free tier, which is always included in your free tier, you get one terabyte of data transfer out to the internet per month. So the way CloudFront works is it doesn't charge you anything for the transfers from S3 bucket to the CloudFront edge locations. What it charges you is for the transfer of your data from the edge locations to the user. So that's why it says out to the internet. And then you get 10 million of HTTP or HTTPS requests. I mean, that's a pretty good deal, especially if you're just starting out. And uh, obviously, once you have growth, then you may want to calculate different things. But even then, let's see. So per gigabyte, it's pretty reasonable price. And now if we try to refresh the URL that we constructed earlier, we see that the image is now served from our CloudFront location. And that is it. This is how you can serve content to your users much faster based on where they're located. And if you have not done this already, subscribe to my newsletter where you can learn about my experience as an AWS developer and possibly learn a few things that you don't know yet. See you in the next one.